Hello mentors, this is Rory Cohen, your coach, welcoming you to our webinar, First Trimester Review. This is going to be about 15 minutes, and we're going to be talking about uh, how it's going overall, what success should look like at this point, kind of reviewing the first trimester, goals and intentions, and then we're going to be talking about the action uh, tracking sheet that we are uh, unleashing this month. So let's get right into it. The first, now we realize that some of you have been working with your participants for the fir, full trimester, three months. Some of you are just coming into it. As you know, we had a curriculum in mind uh, for the year that we start the first three months with self-awareness, really just getting to know. It's a basic emotional intelligence. Who is the participant? How does that participant work through stress? What do they tend to do when obstacles show up? Do they give up? Do they give in? Do they get angry? Do they act like everything's cool and they've got everything under control, but then you find out later that things really aren't going the way they, they said they were? So you're just kind of curious about the participant in the first three months, building a relationship, building trust, getting to know one another, and of course, as coaches and mentors, we're also on a self a journey of self awareness and, and learning every single day and looking working through uh, our own issues as we're working with our participants. So focusing on self awareness is what we were looking for in the first trimester. Now we all have goals. The, the participant has goals. We have goals for them. We have desires for them. But in the first three you know three months, we were saying. Focus on learning about your participant and listening to them versus advising them. And we'll talk about that in, in, in a minute. Uh, leaning into the goals. So setting a goal like having one of our mentors was talking about wanting their participant to uh, get into a union so they'd have more job stability. That's a great goal, and it's something for you to keep in mind as a mentor as you're helping your participant get through their first months of reentry after after the pleading guilty to a felony, uh, some of them are dealing with drugs and alcohol. A lot of them are dealing with housing issues, family issues, employment issues. Some really some some really foundational things that they need help with. You can keep those overall goals in your mind and be moving the needle a little bit further every every week without calling that success or failure. So uh, that's what the first trimester was all about. From the coaching point of view, again, the skill that we were working on was listening versus advising, uh, looking at where you fall on this continuum, of where you tend to fall as a coach or as a mentor. Are you telling people what to do and giving them advice? or asking questions and feeding back what you've heard to help the participant better understand themselves. And looking at this, this sort of more controlling end of the spectrum, which is where most of us tend to be, uh, we think we know what that person should be doing, uh, we think we know best, and, and if they, they could only know what we know, their lives would be perfect, right, uh, versus empowering the person to understand themselves make their own choices, and be able to handle what life is throwing at them in a more empowered way. So uh, we want to then look at, <clears throat> we've talked about the stages of change, and I want to refer you back to TJ Goss's wonderful talk that's in the training, the initial training we did that's online, and he talks about the stages of change from his point of view as a cognitive behavioral therapist. And as you know, many of our participants are in the CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, group with TJ. And uh, so it, it's wonderful to learn as much as you can about that process. It's, um, it's been very, very helpful for the participants that are in that group. But what we realize is that as people contemplate making shifts, I like to think of it more as shifts than change. To me, change means I'm going in this direction. I have to completely go in the other direction. I have to change something. I have to do be a different person. And I, I like to look at it more as shifts or, or up-leveling um, or 
course corrections, just things that are, are more manageable. Uh, but whatever, whatever it is, if we're even talking about stages of, of course correction or habit, you know, instituting new habits, they, there is a stage of change that we all go through when we're contemplating doing something like that. Um, I'm going to switch to this next slide to talk more about this is what the, this is a, a diagram I use to talk about what's happening. We have that cloud looking structure is our comfort zone and where we are in the, the comfort zone is the walls of the comfort zone, if you will, are put together by our life experiences, by our thoughts, our beliefs, our culture. You've heard the, uh, the studies of fleas. They put a flea in a jar and the flea will try to get out of the jar and hit the top of the jar over and over again and eventually will learn to only jump as high as just below the lid of the jar so that when you take the lid off the jar the fleas even though they could jump out only will jump to the top of the jar so you think of that as being the comfort zone that we're all in even if it's uncomfortable even if we're trapped in that comfort zone even if it's violent or uh, there's a lot of things about it that we'd like to change, we're used to it. Our, our neurologic conditioning has been set. So wherever we are in that comfort zone, we, we're, we're there. And as we contemplate moving out and doing something different, our whole neurologic system reacts. Our body goes into reaction and people get upset, they get anxious, they get nervous, they feel depressed. There's a lot of things that happen at that conjunction of, you know, where the line is and they're about to pop through to something new. So going back to that <clears throat> stages of change, we can see that as people get ready to make something, to do something different, there's going to be all kinds of stuff that goes on inside of them. And most people will retreat back to the center of their comfort zone, even if it's not a place they really want to be. So as a coach, you're understanding that, you're noticing, you're looking at what happens to the participant when they, when you ask them to do something new or ask them to consider doing something differently or uh, something new. And you're, you're able to see where they are on this continuum of the stages of change. Are they thinking about it, but they're not really ready? Or are they actually doing it? Are they determined? Uh, I like to think of it too as if there's a scale of one to 10 of, I, I have to do this. This is, I am so motivated. This is like my life depends on it. If somebody is at that place, they're much more likely to be willing to take the risks to push through that sensation of discomfort at the edge of the comfort zone. Then if it's just something like, well, man, I'd like to be an MBA star, you know, that's like a dream or a wish, but it's not, there's not a lot of fire behind it. Um, so as a coach, you want to kind of look for the places where people are uh, finished thinking about it and they're really ready to start moving on it. <clears throat> Just going to move it forward here. So we're going to talk about success a little bit. We've had a lot of discussion uh, over the last couple of months about what success really means. And some of the mentors have talked when we've had our open coaching calls talked about feeling inadequate, feeling frustrated. Either their participant acts like they've got everything under control and the mentor feels unnecessary, or they can't get a hold of their participant and they feel like they're just not, uh, nothing's really happening. And those are all very normal and expected uh, responses of the first months of getting to know your mentee, your participant. So we've had a lot of discussion both on the steering committee with the participants about what we consider to be success, how we measure success, how will we know if this program is successful. And there's a range. I mean, some people will say just having a relationship with their mentor that lasts beyond the 12 months is success of the program. Having one person in that participant's life that they can count on is success. Some people will say, well, if they have a job and stable housing, that's successful. Uh, others will say if they've not committed a new crime or they're not, they haven't gone back to jail or they've uh, been in recovery for a, a year, um, that that's success. So you can see there's a whole range of what, what we consider to be success. And um, 
there's no real right or wrong answer. Um, so you might just even talk with your participant about what would they consider to be success. At the end of this year, what would you like to see? And again, looking for that fire, looking for that, yeah, this really is something I want to have happen. So to help you with that, helping to, for you to understand what the participant really wants to achieve and where the fire is, we've developed this action tracking sheet. This follows, it's, a, it's along the lines of the chat model, which again is in the training that TJ did. Um, that's online um, and that so that your participants if they're involved with CBT they will be familiar with this way of looking at their uh, their lives so you're talking about you're keeping the larger goal in mind of what the participant has said they want um, ie you know getting in a union or buying a house or any of those things but you're also aware of some of the foundational things that need to be in place before that can happen, like getting a job or having someplace stable to live. So you might say you're working on a particular goal or project this month. Maybe this month the goal is getting the GED. Uh, and you're going to talk with them about what are the steps, the action steps, the small 10-minute actions that they can take towards that mini goal of getting the GED. Um, this whole first area about the goal or the project um, and the read upon steps builds on the skill that we talked about at our uh, meet and greets, the agreement versus expectation, which is again a foundational, foundational skill for the first trimester really encourage you to keep using that skill to talk about it, to really be upfront about agreements versus expectations. You know, are, is this something you're agreeing to do? And what kind of support do you need? And what can we do if you don't do it or if something happens? Um, and uh, really keeping the goals simple, small, and uh, clear. And so you would you would note those here, like what is it that you said you would do, and did you do it? And then talking about the challenges I encountered this month, you know, like what came up, how, what was the situation, how did you handle it? And then kind of do a post game review, like a Monday morning quarterback review. Well, what are some other ways you could have handled that? Like what other things would you want to try and see if that has a different kind of result? And then finally, and this is really, really important, look at what they did, what they would like to do more of. And it's really easy to focus on what didn't work. You know, you can have a great day and one bad thing happens and all your attention goes to that. And the, the you know, 99% of the day that went well goes unnoticed. So sometimes just really helping people to say, well, what, what did I do that worked well and I want to do more of that rather than less of the other thing? It's always easier to do more of stuff that feels good than less of things that don't feel good. So make this a part of your conversation. What worked? What do you do? want to do more of? Focus on the strengths. Focus on the positive. And get evidence. Show them that, that their, their uh, ability to say they were going to show up for a meeting and they showed up is progress toward their goal. That's what you want, that's a skill they want to develop, and they, they, they did it this month. So, you know, again, you're keeping the larger goal in mind as the mentor. You're looking at what small actions were agreed to and put on the calendar. Um, they're talking about the challenges and what you could have done differently, and then uh, the progress that they made. So here's the takeaway from this mini class on the trimester review. Uh, one, success is measured in retrospect usually. We don't often know that we've made, made progress until, uh, you know, until we're done and we're looking back on it to see how far we've come. To celebrate the small victories, the small incremental shifts in behavior, the small risks that we took 
to move outside of the comfort zone through the feelings that were uncomfortable and taking an action anyway. Those little mini victories are what, the, in the long run, the steps that get you to where you want to go are made out of. Three, that as a mentor, especially in the first part of the relationship, uh, and really all the way through, your job is to be there, to be consistent, to be supportive, to be a place of refuge, to be a place where they can uh, get to know themselves, where they, where you're slowing things down and you're saying there's no rush here. You know, this is big, what you've chosen into. You've volunteered for this program. This is huge. You've got, uh, you know, you've got a tremendous amount of support behind you and it's going to take time for you to trust it, for you to learn how to use it for you to see the benefit in your own life. So just slow things down uh, and expect that there's going to be a step forward and a couple of steps back, you know, even over and over and over again. So just being there and listening, you know, asking open-ended questions. How do, how do you feel about that? What does this mean to you? And just listening. That's something that most of us don't get enough of at all. And it's impossible to to uh, overestimate the power of just having a solid ear in your corner, what that can do. And then using the uh, action track to, to help guide conversations. That's your takeaway. So that's it. Thank you for coming, and we'll see you next time.